Michael, uh, I don't like our next guest. I'll say it. We were forced to have him on the show by Adobe. It's in the contract. And he forced me to do this podcast. And I'm not a fan of his work um, or his attitude. And I'm, you know, dreading doing this show with him coming up right now. And if you're listening, you're going you're gonna to hear me complain to his face. Because I'm not going to let bullies stand up to me, Michael. Michael, I'm serious. He's a bully. He made me do this podcast. I don't want to do this podcast. I'm forced to do it. And he's, I literally see his face right now. I see his face and it's what we have to deal with. Michael, hold me back. There, I'm going to give you cue signs. If I'm about to lunge at him, you're going to have to hold me back, okay? All right, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Brett Davrin. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Brett Davrin with me in the studio. What's up? What's up? Brett, uh, I, you know what? I can't lie to you. Oh. I'm a little upset. You can't lie? You're an actor. You're so, you lie for a living. I'm upset, why, Brett. Why are you upset? Because I quit the podcasting game years ago. <laughs> yeah. And you pulled me back in. Every time I think I'm out, <laughs> they pull me back in. Uh, I Brett, did. It's First because all, you're so damn good at it. It's true. I'm not just I'm not saying that. Argue with you there. I'm not just saying that because there's a poster with your name on it behind my head. How, how you actually are good at it? Am I we Sam's world with that name? Right? That's all right. I got four posters in here with my name all over it. So <laughs> we need that man. <laughs> Otherwise, we... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you how many shows do you have on right now? Uh, well, currently I'm producing five podcasts right and radio shows yeah and we're part of the family the you podcast are podcast family you're part of the family of nice guy digital uh -huh. airing on adobe radio yep it's a pleasure seriously thanks man well i i mean you want to you want to get into that you want to talk about that or no we, no are we no. going we're going right, we're, right no we're no we're not going to get into that man anyway <laughs> no <laughs> i mean well it's just um i don't know i mean i've never really We've never really like kind of talked about like the story of all of this, really, whether it's on our show or any of the other shows. So I don't okay. know. We so, can chat about that if you want. Yeah. So while I was doing my podcast, Actors Anonymous, years ago, mm -hmm. you came to me at some point. Uh, it was probably in the last quarter of it being alive, and you were like, "Hey, how do you do your show?" You well, actually, I think you actually kind of came to me, and what happened was, I remember being on set of Awkward. The show that we used to do together on mm -hmm. MTV back in the day. What was day. it called? It was called uh, Awkward. <laughs> hey, we, we, Sam, and I are, are both former MTV heartthrobs. <laughs> You're the heartthrob. No. I'm the weird guy with the black nail polish on the show. Hey, man. <laughs> listen, some people are into that. That's anyway, true. you. I remember you, we were standing around, you know, whatever, just one of the days, and you said – Hey, I want you to be on my podcast. I think your podcast was already up and running. And I was like, wait, what? You have a podcast? And you were like, yeah, you know, I've been doing it and I have these guests and whatever. And and I just remember – because I've always been a huge fan of radio my whole life. I remember I got a um, – I don't even know what it would be really called. A like, like a Like a, like okay. a boom box. Well, like yeah. a boom box with a microphone and it had like dual cassette – uh, slots you could put two cassette tapes in and you could press play on one side and then record on the other side and you could talk into a microphone and this was when I was a kid when I was like 10 years 70s. old or something yeah yeah <laughs> way way back in the day uh, and I so I and I remember like starting I, I used to make my own radio shows in my bedroom and I've always just been a huge fan of right. radio and I would stay up late at night and listen to shows like Loveline and I would listen to Howard Stern in the morning or and listen to a lot of sports radio. So always talk radio. I just love talk radio. And so I remember when you said, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? I had already been a fan of podcasts forever and had been so wildly jealous of anyone who had their own podcast because that's all I wanted. I just didn't know how to go about it. And yeah. I remember looking at you and being like, well, if this guy can do it, 
right? <laughs> then anyone can. No, but I, I was very impressed, and I just was like, wow, that's awesome. Of course I want to be on your podcast. And so then I think we did that, and that was kind of the first step. And then I think I just started picking your brain of like, well, but how are you doing it? Like, yeah, because, you know, with technology, like anyone can just start talking into their iPhone on like voice notes and you could post that. That could right. be a podcast. But to get one that, you know, sounds good and sounds professional, all these things, there's a lot of logistics to it. So I just started asking you like, it's great that you have a podcast, but like actually how do you do it, you know? And yeah. that, that was sort of the jumping off point because – Honestly, like you're the you're the inspiration for this entire thing. Like it's all coming full circle with you now oh, yes. back doing your podcast. Say that one more time. It's true. No, no, <laughs> it's a hundred. It's a hundred. Thank you. Million percent true. Like we, I'm doing. I do a morning show on Adobe Radio five days a week, every single morning. Now I would not be doing that if it was not for We Sam Keish and that first being on your podcast the first time, and now that you're back doing a podcast, it's it's totally come full circle. You know, Brett, it's hard being me, and it's hard being <laughs> as amazing it is. You know what's so funny? The, our first two guests have been very kind with yeah. their words about me, yeah. and I feel like th- our new listeners for this show are going to be like, is this show just where we Sam brings on people who really like him? And No, <laughs> no, don't get me wrong. I do no. think you're a piece of shit. Thank you. It's just it's, that yes. I wouldn't be doing my radio show if it wasn't for you. You know what? I like that clarification. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> I'm just happy at what you've allowed me to have. And and I'm okay with that. Yeah. In true L.A. fashion. So basically I I'm your don't... daddy. <laughs> yeah. I'm Brett's daddy. In true day. L.A. fashion, I don't actually like you. It's just what you can do for me is what I like about you. Perfect. I'm your mommy and your daddy. This is weird. This is, Whoa, what? Whoa, what? What is happening? Um, I'm so happy that you actually went with it, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I feel like that's a lot of people's problems nowadays. Sure. They'll get this great advice, or they'll have steps A, B, and C, and D to do something, and then they just won't do it. Right. And that drives me up a wall. Well, and it's also the – which I think I had. Uh, wait, let me back. Oh, man. I went out drinking last night. I have to admit, I have to. Just, my brain's not. not my brain is not, so fuzzy right now. If you watch, I'm trying to put my thoughts together. Hold on, if you're watching the YouTube video, you, I actually saw in Brett's eyes like just this holy shit, this blank stare for a split second. Uh, like, hey, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> just, well, it's just weird being in this. I'm in this studio five days a week, and like, I just I keep forgetting what day it is. <laughs> and mix on top of that like a slight hangover. Anyway, okay, so what were we talking about? Yeah. Oh, people <laughs> not following through. <laughs> Hold on. No, I I I think that um oh my gosh. You know, I have to kind of kick my own ass for a second because you know, saying all that stuff about being a fan of radio and all that and all all that's really true and I wanted my own podcast or my own radio show or whatever it was. I didn't know what it would be, but I wanted all that stuff. But I always let some sort of fear get in the way and and be an excuse for, like, why I wasn't doing it. I would go, like, I really want to do it, but I don't really know how. Um, so I just I, – I can't. Or I really want to do it, but I'm not very good at computers and stuff, and I don't know. Like, all the – like, kids now, they can edit stuff. They do all these – I mean, there's kids, like, doing VFX with, like, iMovie and stuff. I don't know – the first thing I barely know how to tweet. That's not even me playing a character. Like I, I really am not very good with all that stuff. And so there was always some sort of excuse for why I wasn't doing a podcast yet. Yeah. You know, and in talking to you and the kind of person that you are, which I think your audience is getting to know, and they definitely would know this if they listened to the, uh, your other, your former show, it's like, you are like a no bullshit kind of guy. You're like, no, no, Stop all the excuses. Do it. Yeah. And that's what you said to me. We, we we started to have like lunches and stuff like after, you know, being a guest on your show and whatever. And um, and we, we formed like a friendship and you were just like <laughs> – your poster just as, fell off the wall. How symbolic is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, just leave it. Uh, just leave it. No, man. I'm putting it up. All right. Um, <laughs> it, there you, you know go. What? No, there you go. Oh, yeah. Right here. There you go. Perfect. Up. Anyway, um, you're just the kind of guy who's like enough excuses. Yeah. And 
I needed that in that moment. And that was that was the right thing to hear. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that have big dreams and have big ambitions and want to be doing these things, but don't kind of know that first step to take. And I think in doing all of this and in learning uh, from doing all this, I think the first step it, to take is to just take a step. Yes. Whatever I, that is. I understand, too, people's fears of uh, being embarrassed or looking stupid or failing mm-hmm. or putting so much time and effort into something and then right. it doesn't work out. And then people – you feel like people are judging you or people think you're a failure. I get all those fears. And every single one of those experiences ha- has happened to me more times than I can count. Sure. And you get to a point where you're just like, you know what? Uh, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Anymore about anybody else's, uh, any other person's opinion. If um, if they're like, ah, you failed, or I, I'm not embarrassed anymore. No. Um, I love, in fact, now feeling that uh, or experiencing something in the white belt mentality. Uh, huh. In my, I think in the first podcast or the first show I did, I talked about um, I'm taking surfing lessons, and I'm not good in the ocean. Yeah. I can swim. But it's very intimidating well, to me. So I yeah. love that feeling. Being in the surf is much different than being in a swimming pool. Yeah. And so I just think a lot of people just need to sometimes just, you know what, bite the bullet, fail. And yeah. then sometimes that's the best way to learn something. I think, the older, I think the older I get, I think what I came to realize is that even if you do take that first step and it sucks, like whatever you're trying at, you're not good at and you fail and whatever, that's – then you can just learn from it and then take another step a couple weeks later. Like there's not – I think people – you they start fast-forwarding in their head a little too much about like, oh, man, I want to write a screenplay. But on page one, they're trying to think about page 60, and so then they can't write page one because they're thinking about page 60. And it's the same thing with like a radio show. It's like, well, if I start it, then what's the format? And then if I don't get the format right on episode one, then how am I ever going to get to episode 30? And it's like – no, just start the radio show and figure out the format as you're going because that's a fun evolution anyway, and you'll figure it out. And even if you don't figure it out, like, whatever, but at least you tried, you know? Absolutely. Right? Yes. Did uh, any of that make sense? Yes, and we live in a time where you can literally look up anything on YouTube totally. and figure out how to do it. Yeah. And if your excuse is, I don't have enough money, that's not an excuse. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick sorry. of hearing that excuse from hey, everybody. Man, uh, unless you're literally – like begging on right, the street, right? Uh, you you can't really say that. And also, yes, at the same time, you have to be responsible with what you spend on. Like, let's say you do want to start a podcast, don't go buy out eight grand worth of equipment. No, because you're an idiot. Right. That's not that's not financially. Yeah, responsible. You have to you have to be realistic, but you also I think I think a lot of people when they take that first step, they want to take. Such a first step that they're completely set up, completely running. It's popular. A lot of people are listening. You're you're viral, you know, and all these things. It's like, no, you have to walk before you can run. You have to practice. It's yeah. that like 10,000 hours of practice uh, philosophy. It's like just instead of buying the $8,000 worth of equipment, buy a $100 microphone. And most people today have a laptop. Most people do just because of from going to college or high school, whatever, or your parents' computer or whatever, and just plug that $100 microphone into a computer and away you go. Or, like I said, you can – everyone's got a phone that probably has some sort of voice notes app on it, and you can talk into that, and you can post that as a podcast. Yes. And you'll learn as you go along, and the equipment will come. You'll You'll turn around. Like, you start – Look, you start doing a podcast with no money, no budget at all, no nothing. If you can keep it going and if you can stay consistent at it, you'll turn around three years from now and you'll have $8,000 worth of equipment. And you'll be like, where did I get all this? I guess I just sort of acquired it over time and here I am and now I'm up and running and and away we go. I've got a great story for my first time ever recording my first podcast. I'll be the judge of whether it's a great story or not, okay? This guy, I can't stand him. (laughs) Michael, how much time do we have left? <laughs> Can you fake a technical How much time issue? do we have left? Your whole, the whole board of your shows. All right, guys, we are out. Want. Thanks for coming on, Brett. It was such a blast. So I'm the only guest who's ever gotten a time limit on this thing? <sighs> we Sam's whole pitch for the show was like, hey, man, I want to come back and do a podcast, but I don't want any time limits. Yeah. If we talk for three hours, we talk for three hours. Now I come in, I've been here 10 minutes. You're kicking me out? Yeah, man. All right. Surprise, well, surprise. What's your great story? <laughs> <laughs> so... 
I'm recording my first ever podcast on Actors Anonymous, and I'm in the studio. There's a sound engineer, my producer, and I, I'm doing it in a format where I start off the show and I'm just talking by myself. Uh-huh. And I haven't practiced. Right. I've been focused more on the pre-production of everything. And finally, I'm in the nice studio, asked a lot of favors. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in there. I got the microphone, the headset. I give the thumbs up to the sound engineer. My, my producer is like, thumbs up. And I'm in there. I've got my little sheet of paper. Sure. And nothing comes out. Yeah. Literally nothing. And my and there's this like long pause and I look over at my producer and he's just like <laughs> hands up in the air. Yeah. Like, what's the matter? And I'm like, one second. And like I go off into the hallway and I just start scribbling. Just scribbling my notes, like my 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 because uh, I had like what I wanted to like talk about. Like actually writing or yeah, you mean actually like, writing. Uh huh. Like what I wanted to say. Right. And then going back in, I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah. And like, okay. Yeah. And then I'm just reading off a piece of paper trying to make it sound right. natural. Right, right. Anyway, yeah, that was my first story. No, I mean, yeah. It was horrible. But, dude, I was, like, sweating in there. That's, but, okay, I, my first ever audition. Yeah. First ever audition. I think I was 18. This was in Seattle, where I grew up. Uh, I, you know, I'd been in high school theater. Right. Been doing things all the way through high school. I went to summer camps in the summer for theater. All So I, I, I've been acting, you know, but like in a very safe environment for a long time, and yeah, not acting well. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> who who you've been talking to? <laughs> Listen, I had rave reviews as Jack in Into the Woods sophomore year. Okay, are you, rave whoa, 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 reviews. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You were in Into the Woods, of course. There are giants in the sky. Hey, 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 hey! I'll do the singing around here. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the song. Yeah. Anyway, wait, wait, wait. So I was like eighteen, was getting out of high school. Uh, what, and and I had headshots that had been taken, like black and white headshots. <coughs> you okay? <coughs> Is this a bad story? Should I? Was that his way of saying don't, don't tell this story? Uh, we're out of time. Oh, <coughs> no, I'm kidding. Again? Go ahead. No, so uh, choking. Are you all right? <coughs> we're good now. We're good. Well, listen. Okay, this is, okay. This. I don't know. We're going in a thousand different directions. I'll get back to the story in a second. We Sam drinks from a cup that. Looks like it's just dried oregano in there with a straw in it. So the fact that he's coughing right now is not have, a I, shock to I me. I have pieces of herba mate in my esophagus. Herba mate. These kids these days. Anyway, all right. Tell me your awesome story about being Jack. <laughs> Listen, I have got a fantastic <laughs> story for you. <laughs> oh, so excited. Everybody, listen up. Birth story coming no, up. No, so <laughs> I, I had headshots. And so what I did is like, and and I think I don't know if this is the way you kind of still do it, but back in the day, what you would do is you just have you have a you know a hundred headshots printed out, and you load up some Manila envelopes with like a cover letter, and because you got no agent, you got no manager, you, you're not in the union yet, nothing, and I just mailed them to like every casting. I'm using air quotes, casting director, agent, manager, whatever in the Seattle area, which you know there's not like much of the entertainment business up in Seattle. There's actually a lot more now than there was back then. But anyway, so I mailed them all out, got a couple calls from, you know, different agents, managers being like, yeah, come on in and we'll have a meeting, whatever. But I got a call from a, a casting director that was like, oh, we're having auditions like tomorrow for this movie that's going to be shooting up here in Seattle. Movie turns out to be The Ring, the original The Ring, wow. you know that horror movie. <clears throat> and so they were looking for a couple local hires you know, under five lines, probably not, maybe even no lines. I don't even know. But they're like, we're having auditions tomorrow. Why don't you come on in? Cool. So, okay, great. So I go in, and I thought I knew what I was doing, just like you're saying. You think you know what you're doing. You know, you get the you get the sides, which is the little couple pages of script that you're going to read. And I went in, and they do the whole thing, and I introduce myself, and I'm with the casting director, and they they start to read the scene, and I thought I was doing okay, and then it ends, and she just looks up and she's like, listen, she's like. Have you done this before? And I was like, yeah, of course. You know, like trying to be like, of course, I do this all the time. <laughs> I'm looking back, I should have just said no. But I was like, yeah, yeah, I do this all the time. She's like, well, okay. You're, you're fine when you're saying your line. But then when it's my line, you're like looking down and like reading. And you're like not listening. And I can tell that you're very green. And, you know, she, she was being nice about it. But she was like, you, you need to take some classes. You know, and she was... She was being nice. She wasn't being mean about it. She yeah. was actually trying to be, like, helpful. Um, and I just remember walking out of there being like, oh, man, like, everything I thought I knew, I didn't, I don't know anything. 
I gotta, you know, but that's the first audition. But you gotta, you gotta go on the first audition. That's yeah. the thing. Like you can't just sit at home going like it's not gonna go well, so I just won't go. It's like just go. What's the worst that's gonna happen? I didn't die. I didn't. Right. I'm I'm not physically harmed by it. I'm not even mentally. I'm not emotionally scarred by it either. I learned from it. Every experience you have in life, there's something to be gained from it. You'll learn something. Yeah, there, I don't know what it is about just humans in general. They just want to knock it out of the park and, and on the first go. I know. And look, there's some people out there. You hear stories of actors that oh, they, oh, you know, I got to LA. I booked my first three jobs, or first three auditions I went on, or whatever. And like, that's great. Yeah, but that's, but it doesn't <clears throat> happen to the maj- vast majority of people. Okay, Did, I'm gonna clear up that uh, that or what, premon- premonition is not rumor the right word. myth. That myth premonition is not the right word at all. That's not the right word. No, no. You're, I'm thinking about the ring still. Premonition. Who let you host a stuff. podcast? I don't know. <laughs> Some guy with great hair. <laughs> Who as gave well. you a podcast? Um, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, no, like, yeah, there are people who come out to LA. Yes. Yeah. Who will book a huge thing. Yeah. And then they they're on the top of the world, right? Yep. Very very rarely, maybe like point zero one percent of those people yeah. have a sustained career as an actor. I'd say that's true, dude. I've said this before. I'm so glad I booked this series regular role yeah. on for the people. When I did, yeah. and not a year ago, or two years ago, or three years ago, or four years ago, mm, yeah, definitely would not have been ready, acting wise, or mentally, or professionally. That's interesting. Yeah, I I agree with that. Yep. Imagine you booking obvious, uh, uh, like a awkward. How how soon into LA did you book awkward? I think I was here for three or four years but i lived in new york for about four years before that okay so you so i mean i i was already uh, like auditioning professionally for maybe like six years okay by the time awkward came along so i mean it you know it had been a while so let's say your first year in new york you book at awkward oh imagine what that would have been oh i well one i'd be super famous right now so that'd be nice i'd be I'd be more wealthy than I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm super wealthy, but like, you know. Yeah. You'd be in tax bracket. Oh, man. Um, I would have been such a dick. I would have just been such You a mean dick. more? Oh, yeah. More than Oh, yeah. You, you think I'm bad now? Ugh. Oh, imagine. I saw with... the way you were yelling at Katie earlier. <laughs> like yelling yeah. at her. Everybody listening? Yeah. He was yeah, yelling screaming. at screaming. I'm a tyrant. Um, it's Bluetooth. <laughs> I think I, w- I would have definitely not been able to handle that at all. No way. Just the ego would have never been able to be in check. Or at when all. you were in high school booking something huge. Oh, oh my God. No way. Nah, I'd be a, one of those child celebrity stories on that end up going. Yeah, I, I south wouldn't. Real quick. I wouldn't have been ready for that at all. And and the burnout factor is huge as well. And I think like you get started that young. It's you know, and you start to have thoughts of like, is this what I even really want to do anyway? Like by the time I got awkward, I was very secure in like this is the path I want right. to be taking, and so you know, it's it's easier to stick with it at that point. I love acting and I love podcasting yeah. as well because yeah. I just love having great conversations with people uh-huh. and just really getting into the nitty gritty of certain things. I'd say you, it helps. I'd say you have conversations with people. There he goes with that great word again. Jeez. What's that, Michael? Technical difficulties? Aww. Oh, that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> there we go. Oh, again. man. Well, maybe just, we'll have you on. I'm just kidding. I know. That's why That's why we love each other, Brett. We do. But you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. With uh, I did like, what, 105 episodes of Actors Anonymous, and I became, a, I became myself a better actor and just a better person. Even after having these conversations with these uh, professionals, yeah, uh, who are actors, directors, writers, etc., and I realized, oh my God, these people are going through the same struggles I'm going through, and I'm not alone in this. And I was like, oh my God, this podcast has not only benefited my listeners, but it benefited me in ways that I sure. wasn't even expecting. I remember, so it's selfish. That's why I'm doing the podcast. It's for <laughs> me to better myself. Well, I look. I think that. I mean, everything in life has a, a tinge of selfishness to it, a little, I think. Yeah. And that's that's okay. I remember when we started, uh, because my show, the show that we do in the morning, um, we 
I did a podcast before that. So the 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 podcast that you help inspire starting originally, I was doing with uh, just two buddies of mine, and we would get together on Sundays at this studio, and we would record like four episodes in a day um, and have guests in and friends that are actors and whatever, and they'd come in and sit down, and we'd have conversations. And uh, Dude, we, I, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know how you did that. Yeah. I, I actually, looking back I really on it, I... Four episodes in one day? Looking back on it, I kind of don't know how we did it either. We were pretty wiped out by the fourth one. Oh, God. But we would do like four in a day so that we would only have to come in like once a month. So we would release them, you know, one a week over the next few weeks and then we'd come back in and record four more and then on and on and on and um uh i remember that when we very like right when we first started it because there's a lot of logistics that go into starting a show like this if you want it, especially if you want it to be successful you know you you got to get a twitter account you got to get an email address you got to start talking to publicists and getting uh making connections so you can get guests to come in if right. you're doing a guest-based show and there's all this like behind the scenes stuff to do so i was doing all of that uh, for the first podcast, and I remember I was just so busy with the podcast and with this like sort of monster that I created for myself of this podcast that the auditions I was going on all of a sudden started – I started doing a lot better in them and I because I wasn't really thinking about them as much to be honest. Not that I wasn't prepared or not that I wasn't you know, doing my homework before I went in there, but that I was just kind of like – even in the, in the waiting room, thinking about like the podcast a little bit, and so you're not like every audition wasn't as precious as it had been. I wasn't holding on to it, squeezing the life out of it before I even got in the room, you know, because I had this other thing I was working on. And I think I think it's I tell everyone who moves out here to be an actor. I, they say, "What's the advice you have, or what do, what's an advice you have for young actor, or whatever? How do I get started? All these things." And I go, "Look, get yourself in class." Take it seriously. Surround yourself with a good community of other artists and positive people and all these kinds of things and, and that kind of advice. But then the last thing I always tell them is I say, but also have a hobby that's not acting. Yes. Do something else. Put your mind and, – and I get I get that the podcast is sort of in the world of the entertainment business, but it was just something that I could focus attention on that wasn't just auditioning. And I remember I, I think I booked uh, like a little arc on major crimes like right away. And I really do think it was because I was doing a podcast and like not so worried about every audition because I was like, I got, I have this other thing that's fulfilling me too. Yeah. And now I don't have to worry about each one of them as much. And I, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's been great. I love it. I think having a hobby or anything else you do funnels into acting. Sure. For me, it does anyway. Yeah. I did archery for a little bit. I want to get back into it. I haven't done it in a while. Archery, really? I know. That's I, interesting. The, the closest range. Is like forty minutes away. At least. Really? Yes. Well, there's like twelve gun ranges within like a mile of here. I know. No bows and arrows, though. I might just do a gun range then. Uh, it would be kind of funny if you showed up at a gun range with a bow and arrow, and so then like, if the if the movie of your life, if right. the if the camera's tracking down the line of all these guys and girls shooting guns, and then it gets to you, and you just have a bow and arrow. It'd be uh, amazing. But you still have the uh, the <laughs> headphones on and the safety goggles and everything. It'd be amazing. It'd be a little difficult collecting the arrows afterwards. Sure. <laughs> you'd you'd uh, have to I mean, give a warning. Yeah. Please don't shoot. You'd have to let them know. You'd have to like sound an alarm or something. Oh, gosh. Yeah, or it'd be the craziest agility exercise of all time. So are you doing any hobbies, speaking of hobbies right now? Well, that's kind of what I'm saying, I think, is that the, the, like, the podcasting and these radio shows, I think, sort of becomes the hobby, which is, uh, I guess it's a little against my own you. advice. No, no, I think... but. It's become more of a hobby than you than you realize, maybe. Yeah, I like to I like to tinker, man. I'm a tinkerer. I I love to tinker. I love to. I think you and I are similar in like the we have like a little bit of the perfectionist type thing, yeah. you know. Um, but I like to I like the minutia of things. I like having something like I I um I build stuff around the house. Like I fancy okay. myself a bit of a handy guy. I'm not amazing at stuff, but I can fix things and I can build things and I can uh, – right now I'm building a deck in the backyard, like an actual Are you serious? deck. Yeah. Wow. And I, lo I love doing stuff like that. But I think the podcast and the radio shows are similar to the deck. It's like you get your materials, then you stand back and you look at it and you go, I got to trim this piece here. I got to – you know, screw this piece down to this piece here. Oh, that's a little wobbly. Let me go back in and fix that. And the podcast is the same thing. It's wow. and all the radio shows is the same thing. It's like 
the the raw materials would be like you and the other hosts and the the microphones and the studio and all those things and then you guys stand back and you go okay we say i'm gonna do kind of a long form interview show like okay we got that piece there and then uh, our other buddy aaron does a tv centric uh, one here and so we got that piece there and and then i like the tinkering of it like the fine tuning of it and that's kind of fits my personality and so uh i love it i love yeah. that i think that's that's when i'm most happy is when i'm just like in the garage pounding away on some wood or whatever or you know here like with the constant tinkering of like the posters on the back wall or like oh these should be hung here or this i don't know i love that i i agree with you we do have i'm never satisfied tendencies. and i think one of our similar uh tendencies is a pe- certain pet peeves oh yeah and i just remember like one of our pet peeves we share is like whenever like Somebody tells us, oh, cool, like this will be for sure ready by this time. Like, don't worry about it. It's like, are you sure? By this time? Awesome. Great. Uh, and then that time comes along and they're like, oh, cool, where is it? Oh, yeah, we didn't get it done. Ugh. Well, you told me it was good. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just, it happened two days ago. I just haven't had time to tell oh, you. Oh, dude, can I, okay. Yes. Can I tell a story to Please. build on that? To put a point on that? Last night, this happened last night. Well, I, I got a couple of things. Okay, all right. <laughs> My brain. You know, does this happen to you where your brain goes faster than your mouth? So nah. then you're having like you're, you're having like three different conversations with yourself and your brain, but the person you're sitting across like can't um, hear them. So you then when, you're like, you know, when that happens, is when I'm in front of somebody I really admire, yeah, and I look up to. That's when it happens. Really? Yeah. Well, that's not what's happening to me right now. That's huh? <laughs> that's weird. Are you out of time again? Michael, we had a time. We've been out of time four times. <laughs> All right, so uh, last night, this is just last night. We go out with uh, my my brothers in town, um, and so we go out with a group of friends, and we go to this bar, and it's a karaoke bar, and we're you know everyone's having a drink, and we're gonna sing some karaoke, and we're gonna have some fun. It's a pretty crowded place, and you know at karaoke places you can put your name in, and you can sit there for like two hours before you even get up there, and it. That weight stinks, and also I don't know if we're going to be there that long, right? Right. And as I've mentioned before, I'm super rich. So I go walking up to the DJ guy, and I take out a fresh 10, and I put it in his tip jar, and I'm like, hey, man, I want to sign up because that's how you get bumped up the list. I mean, let's, it, that's just how it works, and that's fine. A little gratuity helps you out. Big deal. So <laughs> I go walking up to the guy. I'm like, hey, man. I want to put in a song, da da da, and it was um, my buddy Marty, who you know, and no. who I did. <laughs> yes. Marty, who? Shut up. No, no, I want to know what this, his full name. Marty Shannon. No. Yeah, you know. I know. A, I know a, an artist who sings that song. Uh, uh, what is it? Blow, blow away with me. Get away. Get, with come away, me. or is it get away? Anyway, it's sorry. Not about gonna it. Turn. Um, Marty's a musician friend of mine that we used to do the old, the old, old right. podcast together. Anyway, so he was with us. So him and I were going to sing a duet of Bruno Mars's Uptown Funk. Oh. So I go up to the guy and I put a 10 in his chip, tip jar and I said, hey man, I want to sign up uh, Marty and Brett to sing Bruno Mars. And the okay. guy goes, oh, all right. Like, uh, you'll be up in three people. I was like, great. Sweet. So the, the tip worked. I was like, this is awesome. So we go sit back down and, you know, everyone's hanging out. And like song after song after song after song after song after song goes by. And I'm like, I'm not like upset, like, oh, I gave that guy money or anything like that. I'm just yeah. sitting there kind of going like, what's up? You know? So I'm like, I'm going to go ask him again. So this time I take out a five <laughs> and I go walking up and I put the five in the tip jar. And I'm like, hey, man, uh, what happened to Uptown Funk with uh, Brett and Marty? And he goes, oh, yeah, I don't have that song. And I was like, wait, what? Uh, and now, look, <laughs> I'm not one of these guys who's like, hey, he should have came and found me and told me. And he's a, It's a crowded bar. It's karaoke night, whatever. But, hey, he gets on the microphone between every song. He can't just go like, uh, Brett or Marty also, can you just come up here real quick? Great. Because he's been doing that all night, calling people up. Just tell me. Right? I'm so, I'm so annoyed right so now. So then I go, all right, well, we'll switch it to a, diff- we switch to a different song. And he goes, all right, cool. You'll be up in two people. And then he put us up in two people, and we did the song. But I was like, dude, I mean, come on. Like, 
it, okay. the, uh, the place we're at, let me explain for all the people out there that are like, man, Brazil, like, like, what a jerk. No, The thing no. is, is the place we're at was sm- is small. There's like maybe 50 people there. It's not hard no. to just wave and be like, hey, I can't find your song. <sighs> that annoys me. But it's, it goes along with what you were saying with where people, like it's a pet peeve where like people – like they're gonna do something for you or whatever, and then instead of telling you that they can't get it done, they just kind of don't do it, oh, and you're no. like, "No, I'm gonna go on a rant right now." Oh, uh, okay. I'm sitting back. I'm no. pushing the microphone away. This is this is, this is the kind of shit that just drives me up a fucking wall. This is why. I was driving yesterday. Okay, it's it's it's, it's people who are inconsiderate. Of yeah. Other human beings, other living organisms sure. in the in the world around them. Let's take driving for example. Okay. Yesterday, there's a guy just stopped. Just stopped in a Where? one-way road in an, in, in an entryway into a neighborhood. Oh, right. Okay? Yeah. And there's construction equipment on one side, and I'm, I'm behind him. Yeah. And I'm like, what's – I can't see in front of him. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? And then finally, I take my head out the window because we've been there forever, and I see there's nothing in front of him. Yeah. He's just waiting on somebody, apparently. Uber driver. Oh, right. Yeah. And I give him a honk. Yeah. And he's like, and then he pulls to the side, but he still has half his yeah. fucking stupid car. Yeah. I, and I'm I like, oh, man, I in in my heart of hearts, I wish I could have, like, gotten out of my car, went to, hi, give me your license. Yeah. You don't get to drive anymore, yeah. sir. Yeah. No, I know. I Look, this is now turning into just uh, two guys ranting about traffic. Oh, but my gosh. It's just – it's inconsiderate the, people. The Why worst, couldn't he just pull completely to the side? Let me give you a moving example Ugh. of when the cars are moving and people are being inconsiderate. And this is this is my number – this one makes me seethe, dude. This one just really – oh, this one I just – oh, man. If I could push a button and just make these people just disappear off the face of the planet, I would. When you are in a line of traffic in L.A., whether side street, freeway, whatever, and your lane slows down because there's something up ahead. There's a problem. Right. There's a, a disabled car. There's a – something is in the road making everybody in this lane that you're in stop. And let's say you're like four cars back from whatever the disabled vehicle is, right? And everyone comes up and comes to a stop. Everybody behind you pulls out – around you so fast that you can't pull out and get around whatever is stopped and they're just pulling out and whizzing around pulling out whizzing around pulling out whizzing around pulling out whizzing around and you're just sitting there going i can't go because you guys are all going around me at 70 miles an hour and i'll get killed if i put my nose out there why does the person in back of you not just go a little slower around you which would let everyone get around the disabled vehicle okay. instead they're just like i'm just going to go around and whiz past everybody and you're you're just stuck sitting there okay. it drives me in sane and then when i finally do get my moment to go because now i said there's three or four cars in front of me behind the disabled vehicle as well and when it's finally my turn to go because i'm a saint I do it nice and slow, and I block the traffic for a split second for everybody in front of me to be able to go. Because that's just nice. Let's all just – if everyone just changed the way they drove, society would change. I I need more uh, uh, safe but aggressive uh, driving in terms of I don't want somebody taking their casual uh, drive out on the uh, the town on a rush hour morning. Right, right, right. And leaving 10 car spaces in front of them on the highway. Right. Okay? Yeah, I know it doesn't really extend my uh, – or, or decrease my arrival time. I get that. But at the same time, it's like if everybody starts doing that, we're leaving 20 car spaces in front of you. Buddy, other. you cannot text and drive without leaving that much space, though. This is the thing. Let me – I don't know where this podcast is going, but no, now it's just it's, becoming no, – no, 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 I'm going. True. I'm going. I drive – Katie and I uh, – so so Katie LeClaire and I, she uh, produces and co-hosts the morning show with me every morning on Adobe Radio, 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern. Anyway, live. You can tune in live. We give away prizes and stuff. You guys should check it out. Anyway, listen. We carpool every morning to the studio, so it's 7 a.m. on the West Coast, so we get here at 6 a.m., to do you know pre-production whatever talk over the show whatever set everything up we leave our we we live real close to each other in town as well so we carpool and we leave there at 5:30 in the morning there's still so a lot of traffic lo- on there 
there's traffic and also it's a little dark, right? Yeah. And dark out when you're driving is the easiest way to see everyone who's texting and driving because their faces are lit up by their phones and you can see their phones lit up because it's dark. And we see people that take their phones and then turn their, like put on a YouTube video, turn their phones sideways and then put their phones uh, in front of their speedometers hey. and drive down the hey. freeway watching TV. Hey, if you do that, get captured. Okay. Like what is happening? If you do that, if you're listening, get captured. What is happening? It's crazy. And, <laughs> and I, I have the solution. Do you know what the Sorry. solution is? We said, so, what's the solution? I have the solution to all this. Okay. To lazy driving. I have the solution. Go ahead. Manual shift cars. Thank you very much. Stick shift Thank cars is the solution. Thank what you. happened was somewhere along the line, someone invented the automatic transmission, and everyone went, oh, this is great. The car switches gears for me. This is amazing. And it is. It's fantastic. But what now Now all you have to do is press the gas or the brake and then steer. That's all you got to do. So your hands are free to do some other things, and you get distracted. And then you just coast because, like, Ah, oh, the car will shift for me. I don't have to actually. When you have a manual, which I don't have, but when you, I, I, I drive manuals and like race cars and do things like that and drive stick shifts yeah. all the time. And when you do it, you're actively driving. That's the thing. No one's actually out there actively driving. And also, no one's afraid of accidents anymore because oh, cars are so safe and I, everything. So everyone's just on their phones, lazily driving down the freeway, clogging it up for go getters like you and me. Hey, saw some lady fixing her hair. Oh, on yeah. the highway. Oh, I saw a guy That's reading what, a newspaper. This is what I did. Ba, ba, ba. She stopped fixing her hair. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Maybe when you're going 60 in the fast lane right. in Los Angeles, maybe that's not the time to fix your hair. Have you ever been in a car accident? Me? Oh, that's actually a really good question. No, I have not, sir. Not ever. Like, not, not even a fender bender, nothing? I literally, the, the closest thing to that, I bumped... The person in front of me. Yeah. When I first went out, like literally bumped. Yeah. But it, no damage or anything. I've been in a couple. Um, uh, one, on one pretty crazy one, but it was on a racetrack. Um, in life, I have been like, <laughs> one time I was sitting at a stoplight and the lady was driving an SUV in front of me, like a big Range Rover, and I was in a little uh, two door Acura. And. <laughs> The lady, I was sitting at a stoplight, just sitting there, and the lady, all of a sudden, her reverse lights came on, and she just backed her car right over the hood of my car and was, like, sitting on the hood of my car. Why? And she got out of her car, and I was like, what What was that? And she goes, oh, I thought I was too far into the crosswalk, so I backed up. This is pre-backup cameras. But anyway, um, I, can't, I've I, can't, been in, I can't take people, The reason man. I asked if you've been in a car accident is because I have this other theory that I will espouse to you, which is people... I think pe- people who haven't been in a car accident or and who are like newer drivers and things because cars now are like driving themselves and keeping you in the lanes and stopping for you and they're so safe and there's a million airbags and all these things, especially if you're driving a modern car. They don't realize that like your car has weight and physics and inertia and like all these things and uh, mass and like your car is a you know 2,000 pound machine that you're operating. They, they like forget, realize, they don't realize that because they're just, ah, just, this is how I get to work. It's like, no, put the phone down. This is a machine. Operate it as such, and we'll all get to where we're going. Like, I honestly believe traffic in LA would be alleviated a little bit if everyone was driving a stick shift because you'd actually have to. I agree with drive. you. I think there's also a deeper, I know we, we, we've been, you know, we're, kind we're of, being serious and joking around at the same time, but I think what, what we're saying, it, there's some truth to it. I think people are get, have it too easy sometimes. Well, I like, think instance, yeah, I think this extends to all areas of life. There's too much of a safety net sometimes, and I don't think that's good. Sure, I really don't. Right? Uh, are you, you Michael? Dude, you're preaching in the choir. Michael, do you do you agree with us? I I just want to shoot this out. <laughs> Michael's the audience right now. Yeah, like Michael. Our- Michael's our awesome uh, co-producer on the show, uh, sound engineer, uh, and, and an overall great guy. Do you see what we're saying though, Michael? You can talk to the mic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We're, we're, so we're on track. That's Michael, right. do you think some of your most, your best lessons have been learned whenever you failed at something? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Michael's a man of few words. He's very direct, and that's what I love about <laughs> I him. I love him. There's no bullshit around him. I love it's just it. like, yeah, we could do that. Yep. Okay. This is a cool story about Michael. Uh, 
again, I'll judge if it's cool or not. Just oh my these God. qualifiers all oh my the time. God. I can't. I mean, I can't. Just literally, tell the story. if you're listening to Brett right now, I'm sorry. This is our worst episode. <gasps> what? This is our worst episode to date, and oh, we'll no. be the worst one. Oh, no. We, this is low. Oh, and Wait, boy. we're going We're just going up after this. Can't wait to have Katie on the show. All right, tell a cool story about Michael. Katie's giving me the thumbs up or the fist. I can't tell. Tell a window. cool story thumbs about up. Michael, and then <laughs> tell a cool story about Michael, and then I'll, I'll get back to more driving. Dude, I'm telling him, like, talk. all this stuff about what we need for the show, and he's just like, cool, yeah, got it. Right, and I've never met somebody else who's been like that because I'm like that with certain things, and I'm like, oh, "Isn't it sure nice?" You got it, and he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "All right," and then he does it. Yeah, isn't like, it nice to work with people? It, it is. Oh, it's every- so nice to meet and work with people who actually just get it done, get it done on time, and do it right. Who who and who want to learn? How not to do only it that, right. but like they work hard. There's yeah. no complaints. There's a problem. It's not a crazy thing. Mm-hmm. They communicate well. Seriously, communication no is the setting up one. this podcast with you guys. Yeah. Um. And and the team I found, I've been like, this has gone way too smoothly. Oh, well, nice. Which one of you guys Good. are a meth dealer? Like that's what's going on. I'm like, <laughs> somebody's a meth dealer here. That's why. <laughs> that, there has to be a balance. The other shoe's gonna scale. drop yeah, at some point, right? Yeah. But no, man, it's just been awesome working with people. And I think that's one of the keys to success. And I've always heard about it in the past. But seriously, surround with like surround yourself with people who are like that, hard working, communicate yeah. well, have clear goals, yeah. are not lazy, uh, just good people. Well, work ethic, communication, all those kinds of things are just oh, like I love, super I love, important. I love dropping people out, out of my life. There was a period <laughs> who I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. we're done. Yeah. We're yeah. not. I don't. Hey, what do we got to talk about? It's Nothing. important to know. I. It's important to know when to do that and how to do it. Right. Correct. And not like to the way have I'm the talking confidence. About it, like, Bye. No, no, but I, no, but I mean, you know, and to have the confidence to be able to do it, and know yeah. that like, it's okay. Like, because there's that thing of like, negative. You can. First of all, you should drop negative people, and it's okay to drop negative influences and people in your life, and. The thing is, is like if they get their act together and whatever, like they'll come back. Yeah. You know, but if they don't, like that's okay. And you kind of, and that's what I meant by being selfish earlier when we were talking about it. It's like, you know, you, sometimes you have to be a little selfish and go, like, I need to look out for myself here. Like this person's not a good influence on me. This person's not uh, part of the team or pulling yeah. their own weight or, or whatever. Right. And um, it's, it's not personal. It's no. just, hey, it, I got to look out for B sometimes, right? And, and that's that's okay. And it, you know, I would, I, let me clarify: I'm not wishing them ill will. No, either. of course not. It's like they're on their own journey too. Yeah, totally. And that's fine. But I can't like right now. I always love using this analogy of life. You're basically like an ultra marathon runner. Yeah. And sometimes you're running through green pastures and everything's going great. Sometimes a branch falls on you. Sometimes you're stuck in mud. Sometimes it's a blizzard, and that's the way life is, right? Yeah. Or a, a desert or whatever. And sometimes you meet people who are running with you along the way, and then you realize, ooh, they're taking a path that's not beneficial to where I want to go, or it's total opposite. And it's like, okay, man, good luck. More than welcome to join, but you're on your own thing. Right. Yeah, totally. And and that's okay. I think the further uh, I get into life as well and the older I get, I realize that, like, to some extent, people just kind of, they are the way that they are. And it's, it's hard to, like, change that like if they're doing something or, or a behavior that you feel like is it is um you know counter to whatever you're trying to achieve or whatever it's like so hard to have them actually change and so it's it, it's 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 just it's better to just go you know what like this isn't going to work and and that's okay that's all right you go do absolutely. your thing i'll go do mine and it is what it is absolutely yeah 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 I realize my my circle of people have gotten has gotten so small, and that's oh, fine yeah. with me. Yeah, because I have my day filled up with so many things that I want to do that it's like whenever I want friend time, it's like oh I know who to go to, mm-hmm. who will get where I'm at in my life and in my journey, and that's okay with me. I couldn't imagine having like twenty friends. Well, I think I, I mean th- that sounds weird, but like twenty close friends. Well, I think that's the thing. That's why I was just gonna say that. I think the thing is is like I know. A lot of people, right? You know, and and you you cannot live in Los Angeles or New York or anywhere where you're trying to do kind of what we do, which is like yeah. acting and entertainment and whatever. Uh, 
you you really can't do it and not know a lot of people. You just meet people constantly, whether it's at an audition or a casting director or an agent or manager or whatever, you, lawyers. You're just constantly, constantly, constantly meeting people, other actors, producers, things. Yeah. You're constantly meeting people. So I know a lot of people. But friends, like friends, friends, I keep my circle pretty small too. And I think it's because – yeah. I don't know. It's just one. It's less work, which is nice. Right. Um, and two, it's just uh, you know that those those people, you know, they got your back and they're there for the right reasons and yada 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 yeah. yada. Like I don't yeah. need a lot of friends, um, but I need the right friends. Yes, and I think like with any type of relationship, you all you have to put in the time for it. Sure. You know I mean? And if your time is limited it's hard to fit in a bunch of people into your schedule yeah um it's it's actually it's impossible dude, this has happened to me multiple times somebody will say hey let's grab coffee when i'm talking i'm like yeah let's do it and then i'm like oh shit like we don't have anything to talk about anymore huh like i'm like they're telling me about their stuff and i'm like well you should just do that like in the back of my mind i'm like well I'll just do that why are you why are you complaining about it you know what i mean <laughs> i'm not saying that because they're not asking for my advice but i'm just like oh yeah that sucks uh, how's everything with you? Uh, everything's good. Yeah, everything's great. Just chugging along. Cool. <laughs> That's it. I've good been talking. It's it's just hard to. I, I find that I go. It goes through. It goes in waves for me. Like I feel like sometimes I go through moments where I'm like, man, I need to see people more often, and I don't see people enough. And um, I have I have two kids now, so it's like I just family and oh, yeah. everything. Like it's just. There's no time, and I beat myself up over it a lot uh, sometimes if I'm on one of those waves of beating myself up over not being able to see people. But then I go in other times where I'm just like, you know what? Like everybody's busy. Everybody's got their thing to do. Yeah. Every Like people who are my true friends, they know that they're my true friends, and that's why they're my true friends because they're secure in that. And even though we don't get to see each other as often as we want to, we know that We'll just pick right back up where we were the last time we saw each other, and I think we're all okay with that, and I, that's a I, good place to be. I have a friend like that who lives in Colorado. Uh -huh. His name is Joey O'Brien. What's up, Joey? Joey. Yo, what's up, Joey O'Brien? Um, and we've started writing letters to each other. What? Yeah. You guys are like in a Victorian yeah. uh, romance novel. And, and months go by in between the letters. Do and they, you know are the they proper? Yeah. And so this is the, the – not proper. What do you Wait, mean like – you mean like on paper? Yeah, writing letters, like writing by hand. Do you put a little spritz of cologne in the envelope? And yeah, then... why? I'm just asking. I put dried up jasmine flowers in That's there as so well. That's so nice. Weird? Anyway. Dear, <laughs> dear Joey O'Brien. Dude, you know what we realized? We have to take pictures of what we wrote last time and what, what we were talking about. Because <laughs> yeah. months go by and we're like – and we and he mentioned it in the last one. He's like – Hey, how the hell did people remember what you, they were talking because about back you, then? Yeah, you can't just like scroll up. Like you're like, what are we talking about now? <laughs> what is this asshole talking about? That's you know really what I mean? funny. Can you imagine having an argument letter wise? Wait, do you you put a stamp on it? We put it yes, in the mail. Yes, we mail it. Yeah. What year is it? What is happening? Really? You know how how much? More I thought I was an old man. It's much better. Wow. It's much because you have to think about what you want to say. I'm. That's. This is why I'm impressed with it. Like. It's that's a commitment, huge commitment. That is a big you. You're in a full blown committed pen pal relationship, right? And I have to save the letters, so I can you know again, just I know I've taken pictures, but sometimes it's like okay, what did what did he say in this one? And then like okay, oh my god, you're gonna have a shoebox full of letters from Joey O'Brien. Oh, that's gonna be so weird. Uh, I mean, you... I'll have to delete, like, not del delete. Here's where my mind's at. Delete. Get rid of, uh, eventually, like, if it starts stacking up, like, oh, this is weird. Okay. We now, hold on. I know this is your show, but now I'm going to start interviewing you for a second. Do it, dude. Good luck. What? <laughs> what? How did this start? Whose his, idea was this? His, because he, he felt like he deleted his Facebook, and he felt like he was just getting too consumed with false information uh -huh. and not having meaningful connections with people. Right, right. And he and without and meaningful connections with the people he wanted to have meaningful connections with, like special people in his life. Uh huh. So he, where did the idea for letters come from? His, he wanted to do it because wow. you have to take the time and and then you have to mail it out. Yeah. And so it's a commitment. Yeah. You can't just, I mean, you could just ignore a letter, but it's like, no, I really want to talk to this person. And, dude, our conversations got. So so deep so quickly on there because it's like stuff we really care about. The conversation's in the letters. In the letter, There's no fat in the letters. Everything's wow. written with the 
with reason and with a meaning behind it. Wow. And I, I don't like type this. it out because then you can just like, I had to delete, delete, delete. No, when you write, it's like, no, this is important. Do you – and you, you've you never written like a rough draft and then – Nope. You just fire it out just there. Just sit down. And I scrib- maybe I'll scribble out like a, like a word or something. Like I, I don't know how to spell this. Right, sure. But yeah. Wow. I love that. I remember – I mean I'm so old that when I was in high school and in junior high – um, and even in, even I didn't go to real college, but I went to tap dancing school in LA or I mean in uh, New York, um, that people would write notes like letter, oh, letters, yeah, I yeah, guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you get a letter from a girl and it's like folded in the shape of a heart. <laughs> How do they do that? Every know. girl I ever right? grew up with, every girl I grew up with could write a 18 page letter and then fold it up into the shape of a swan and then give it to me before first period. It's, it's so impressive. Who teaches them that? It's DNA. I have a daughter. Is someone going to teach her that or does, it just is in there? It's in there. They're man. born with it? It has to be they're born with it. Wow. This is – dude, you brought back some nostalgic memories I know. Let's, let's go down this road. I like nostalgia. Oh, my gosh. Can dude. you imagine like, wait, like crossing paths with the person you wanted to give the note to? You know what, man? Okay. This is this is all happening in real time. I'm having this is flooding back right now. Why are you crying? I'm, I'm <laughs> actually like almost gonna get emotional because I'm actually sitting here thinking that like because I I went to high school without cell phones. Right. Are we off the cameras? No, no. I'm, I'm just leaving. trying to make sure I'm um, I'm in there. Um, I went to high school without cell phones. Right. I got my first cell phone, which was like one of those little Nokia ones with the green screen and the black writing on it. Yes. Um, you know, you could play Snake, and that was about it. I got one of those. I think I was 19. Um, nobody had a cell phone when I went to high school. So if you were going out with a girl, um, you'd get to class like I was describing, and then, you know, maybe she'd hand you a note, or maybe you'd hand her a note. And there was such excitement around that when she'd hand you the note or when you'd hand her the note because it was like, oh, she's going to – when is she going to read it? Right. Is she going to wait till after her first period or yeah. is she going to read it now? Is she going to wait till homeroom? Is she yeah. going to maybe wait till she takes it home tonight? Or then if she hands it to you, it's like, oh, should I, should I open this now? I don't know what it says. Oh, I hope it says good things. And there's so much like anticipation around that. I miss that part of life because yeah. now with the, with the texting – it's like you just open it up right away, read it. It's never long, like usually, you know. And if it's a long text, like, whoa, you probably did something wrong. You never get a long text that's positive. No. Long texts are always – wait, do we just stumble on something? Long texts are always negative. Long texts are always like, and you know what else you did last night? Right. It's like, oh, God. But the opposite is true for uh, handwritten letters. You don't want a short letter. Right. Right. So- you write dear, a long letter to dear a girl. John. Like, I've hey, left not... you for someone else. Or yeah, like hey, I, I don't I only like you as a friend. Or no, right, I don't want to go to prom with you. Right, you want the long letter. You want the long letter. Interesting. I miss that anticipation, that anticipatory part of life. Is that even a word? You miss high school girls. No. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> That's why I roll past the the school out by my house real slow. That's not creepy at all. Get a good look. Actually, I just roll past real slow because I'm like, will one of them recognize me from TV? So That'd be fun. No, ah, so I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It's, it's so a dark. joke, everybody. <laughs> it's so sad and dark. It's a joke. No, I, I roll past it. real slow because the flag team's out on the field practicing. Hello. No, I'm just, it's a joke, everybody. Calm down. We're live. I'm kidding. <laughs> Kate, um, Katie's looking through the window like, hey, don't say like, that. Stop saying that. Hey, who are you? Um, no, but I miss – dude, yeah. hold on. Let's, let's go with this. I miss – Okay. That some... anticipate, but here's I'll I'll take it even a step further. Okay. I miss that anticipation part of life. The I miss the foreplay of life. I miss go, I, dude. I'm so old. Whoa. I miss going to Blockbuster. Yeah. And picking out a movie, and then not really knowing much about it except for what you can read on the back of the box, and then going home and putting it in, and maybe that VHS tape sucks, but it's the only movie you got, and you're stuck with it. I love Netflix. I love Hulu. I love all these things. I watch them just like everybody else, and I love it. I love the convenience of it. I love that it's not very expensive. I love all the content they give me for my monthly fee. I love all those things. But I got to tell you, I mean, how many people out there, you just scroll and you 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 never really pick on anything. And then even when you do pick on pick something, it's like five minutes in, you're like, ah, this sucks. I'm going to go to something else. 
you never could do that. You you would have to. You just I don't know. Like it's maybe you'd end up with a life, bad man. movie, but so what? You 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 hit it on the head perfectly. The foreplay of life, man. Nobody wants There's the foreplay no anymore. Everyone wants to skip all the foreplay yeah. and get right down to the intercourse. Maybe I just want foreplay. Foreplay is fun. Why am I looking right at Michael while I'm saying that? He's so uncomfortable right now. Michael, I just want foreplay, bro. <laughs> Everyone needs to slow down. The intercourse will come. You know what I miss? I used to be in theater, obviously, in high school, eighth grade, and uh, in college a lot. But what, and specifically in high school, did you ever play Jack in Into the Woods? No, I played the steward, number two, because they had to split the role up. In Into the Woods? Into the Woods, steward. Oh, boy. Yeah, I was trying to go like for Like an A cast and a B cast? No, like, there was just, you know, they were like, oh, we got to give him something. <laughs> really? Yeah, they split up the steward role. I couldn't sing. It was fine with me. Oh, totally. right. nah. You nailed that Giants in the Sky earlier. Thanks, man. Practiced for right. 15 years. Sorry, I didn't mean to um, interrupt you. No, no, stop. Don't ever do that again. Um, <laughs> it's my show. <laughs> Our numbers are so much higher. <laughs> so so disrespectful. <laughs> um, no, man. I used to love, and this is such a silly thing, but waiting till after school came, save up like three dollars. Yeah, and I know in the vending machines, like I know which stuff I was gonna get. Sure. And you know, waiting till school was done, going in there, yeah. picking it out. And just enjoying it, you know, as my snack during rehearsal. Right. Those were good times, man. They don't even have vending machines at schools anymore. They don't? No. I don't know. I haven't been in a school I, in forever. Dude, listen, we had soda machines at our schools. They, they don't have that anymore. Same. It's all they have a soda machine, it's all water. I'm not even making this up. This is hundred percent true. What are you, what are you oh, sorry. Doing? Somebody I, I couldn't tell who was coming into the building and oh. it kind of concerned me. <laughs> it's, oh, like, it's Tom. He owns the joint. What's up, Tom? He's allowed to come in. Um <laughs> Uh, they no, yeah, no soda machines anymore. Dude, no vending much, machines. No junk food. How much sugar did we consume? In oh, high school? tons, tons. But you know the difference is then we then we go to sports practice probably or something or some sort of uh, activity and burn it all off. So it was fine. Now you well, just go home and start tweeting. Well, there was a guy in my high school. He God, we sound like bring... old men. Oh my God! Oh, so what? God. If you're li- so I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, I don't um, care either. That's part of being an old man. I'm rich. Because we're rich. I'm prime oh, time. No. Why it's would I care? Happened. It's finally happened. I'm on prime time network He's television. Become, uh-oh. Oh, no. Why would Michael. I? I'm rich. No, I'm telling Michael. Michael, that's the end of the show. Turn it off. No. Dude. I love. I, a, I, lo- I want someone out there to think they were being 100% serious about that guy. And I want them to tweet at me. And I you want, know what I want? I, I want to invite them to my block I want party. just being like, You're, you guys are dicks. Like, you're talking about your riches. It's t- tongue-in-cheek, people. Hey, guess what? I'm not rich. No. It's a joke. I was on MTV. All right? MTV. And I'll... I mean, look, I love them. I'm making that little... I love them. I I love what they gave me. I love all those things. But they don't pay, people. Hey. uh, They they pay very decently. So my amazing story, amazing, great, cool story that I was going to tell. The most radical story of all time. Here, sit back. I've got the most awesome story of all time. Actually, it's kind of sad. Some kid decided to bring a full two-liter... What is it? Two-liter Dr. Pepper? Mm. Yeah, one of those big ones. Yeah, two is uh, yeah. after school practice for uh, I think it was baseball or football. Uh-huh. One of those actors after school activities. Uh, he had to, he got sent to the hospital. <laughs> what dehydrated? He was drinking just the Dr oh, Pepper. Oh yeah, dehydrated. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You do want to try to Dude. drink some water. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> wrong choice of beverage. <laughs> Dude, when I was in high school, uh, this whole like water, like I don't think even. I don't know the age really of anyone who's listening right now, but uh, this whole like water thing where everyone's just hydrated and hydrated and hydrated, water, 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 force water. You got to drink water. Hey, drink enough water today. Hey, you got any water? This whole water, bottle water everywhere, bottle, bottle, water, water craze, water everywhere. That was not a thing when I was in high school. No. No way. If you drank water, people were like, why are you drinking water, you wuss? Like, it was all just Coca Cola, Pepsi, Dr Pepper, Mountain Dew, Literally Sprite, the worst, orange some of the soda. worst things in excess. I should say that. In a, oh in a, yeah. Like here's the thing, if like every once in a while, you know, they're like, I'm not a Dr Pepper. Sure. I don't think that's a bad thing. No, of course it, it, not. What's up? The sidebar. It's really funny that you say that about uh, drinking water. I have a running app on my phone, and it says it tells me this. His he's holding up his phone. It says, "Drink some water." 
Is, Why do you have that? You have an app that tells you to drink water? It's a running app. Michael. <laughs> Oh, my oh a running, like a running, like a... Yeah, oh, 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 it's just, oh. just an app. That, no, 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 no. <laughs> that is running. It's, it's a running, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm t- dude, it, we used to go to, you know, you'd be at football practice, uh, soccer practice, whatever, and everyone's drinking Gatorade. Yeah. And if you saw the guy drinking water, you're like, why are you drinking water? That's got no flavor. Get some Gatorade in you. And, I mean, Gatorade's fine, but it's full of sugar and full of all kinds of things. Like, nobody drink water... That was there was one water button on the soda machine for like Aquafina to come out or something, and it was always full of Aquafina probably because no one went for the water, and now right. everything is just water, 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 right. bottled water. Has anyone ever thought about this? Water comes out of the tap, people. Hey, you man, can drink no, it. No, 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 not in LA. Yes, and you I'm can. I'm not a fan of plastic water. <laughs> you can drink the tap water, we Sam. You don't drink tap water? No, absolutely what? not. Not in LA. No. You don't? No. You can. <laughs> If you're hearing a, a, a sound throughout the podcast. That's why I put the mouse pad underneath my cup. Listen. Wait, you don't drink water? In general? No, tap water. You don't drink no. tap water? Are you crazy? No. Why? No, man. Too much fluoride. Oh, my God. Yeah. Where is your tinfoil hat? Dude, it's in my... Is it under your beanie? Dude, let me tell you something. I would rather drink out of a spring in the mountains. Of course. We, Sam. Yes, of course. Everyone would don't, rather drink out of a... Mountains, look. Yes, we Sam. It's if I not had a great choice for you, if I had a choice, oh here I, we go. If I had a choice, I would have a helicopter take me to the top of a mountain, and I would have a, a yeah, you know, Bambi himself would come oh. down and eat from my palm, and I would drink out of a mountain bubble babbling brook. Yeah. But I live in Los Angeles, and sometimes I'm thirsty, and I'd throw that tap open and stick my face under it and drink it. You take a shower, don't you? Yeah. Then you're under the same water. I have a filter on my shower head. Oh, my God. He's one of those. To remove some of the chlorine. What? Yeah. Oh, please. What do you mean, please, man? Uh, chlorine you know, gives you character. Not good for you. So, Chlorine, uh, Chlorine what is he showing? Michael, are you, you better be on my side, Michael. I don't know what you're showing. Michael up. just pulled up something on Safari uh, on the internet here. It says, L.A. tap water as clean as bottled water. Boom. There you go. Headline. What hey, guys, if you're listening to what, the show, looking for a new sound that? engineer and producer. Oh, that's, that's actually – that's ABC News. That's not so, even that's not dude first of all no. that's not even like my my mom's hey, website what, that I what? run from my basement that's L, that's ABC News reporting that Have you ever just out of curiosity Go ahead. have you ever unscrewed the the little um I don't know what it's called but it's kind of it's like a little tap or or what? or um where the water comes out of the sink Oh like you the little have, screen yeah, that's it's, on the that's right on the spigot yeah yeah, 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 exactly that yeah, thing. Yeah, have you ever unscrewed that and just kind of looked in the pipe? Yeah, it's not good. Th- oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, but dude, nothing. Uh, we Sam, you walk outside of this studio right now, right, out the front door of Adobe Studios, right, and take a deep breath. It's horrible for you. Yes. So whatever. I'm trying to mitigate what I put into my body. Look, of course. I mean, look, I'm I'm health conscious in the way that's negative. I am health conscious in the way where, like you were saying earlier, like do I eat a supersized, you know, French fries and Big Mac every day? No, of course not. But I'll have like two a year. Okay. You know, so I I am aware of it too. But it's yes, it's water, baby. It's just water. No, it's not just water. That's the thing, man. Uh, Okay. I'm curious to know where they took that study. I mean, where did they extract the water from? Is it like, hey, random Joe's apartment building, right? Because well, that that's also okay. plays in yes, effect. Of course, that's true. Do you know what yes, I mean? Yes. I Maybe mean, my apartment building right. doesn't have great pipes. Right. And that's, different that's a pipes. thing. Okay, fine. But what I'm saying is, is that we live in a world where we have been convinced of this, like, bottled water. Th- I mean, how many different Dude, you've bottled been convinced water- that tap water is okay. No, what I mean is advertising, big water hey, out there. Brett, I'm let me it's just kind of ridiculous. Brett, it's n- it's just as bad as pharmaceutical companies. Mr. It's Davern, silly, Mr. Davern. I'm not a fan of plastic of water in the plastic yeah, and, bottles. And either, by the way, way, they, 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 leave, they just did they just yeah, did a news thing. They leave with, those cases sitting out the back of a uh, grocery store. It's leaching from the sun. Right, and all these there's, things. There's it's chemicals bad for you. So uh, yes, I'm screwed either way. 
I use a Brita and the plastic bottle. I think I'm what sorry. we've determined here today on this podcast is that Brett and we, Sam, are going to get a cabin somewhere on a mountaintop yes. in Idaho. And I'm we're going to drink it. from a babbling brook every morning and write letters to our boyfriends and live out the rest of our days. Tom, are you in? That's it. We're Tom, all are you in go. our Michael, cabin? let's go. Forget it. He's yet. Tom's in. You know, we, we got a cult. Listen. We got a cult. We start the show. I think I got my life together. I He's got, drinking plat. What is he? Is he's, he drink- he's drinking Coke Zero right now. Wait. Damn it, Tom. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> Tom just completely shitting on the point. Wait, listen. We say like, yeah, man. Let's do it. We started this show. I think I got my life figured out. I got two kids, got a house and a mortgage, and it's all figured out. I'm running five different radio shows now, doing all these things. I got it all figured out, and it's devolved to a place where I'm just ready to leave it all and park my butt somewhere in – Southern Idaho and detached from everything. And M- Mrs. Davern, say like, goodbye. Yeah, like what happened? Say, get, say goodbye to Brett. Where did we, where, how did this happen? <laughs> You've convinced me. Man, I, that's the thing though. Like, why do you think I like going running pre dawn on the mountain? Because you like sending the Instagram post from the top of the mountain to make us all feel like assholes? It's <sighs> <sighs> to get away, bro. You guys follow We Sam on Instagram? You follow we I'm now I'm asking the people out there too. Do you guys follow We Sam on Instagram? He posts some sort of pre dawn, foggy, mm-hmm. dewy, misty what is what is that uh what is it in the early morning? The you know, you know what I'm trying to say, like the mist of the early morning. Yeah. He posts these like crazy photos from the tops of mountains. Yeah. At like three thirty in the morning just to make us all feel like pieces of shit. That's <laughs> That's and then enough. below it, he puts some inspirational quote like, "You could do this too." It's like, oh, oh yeah, fuck oh, off. Whoa. And then I just give go back my to inspirational bed. quotes a little bit more. It's always good morning, warriors. You are stronger <laughs> yeah. than the struggles you face. I know. And you know what I do? I read that and I go, "He's right." Or grab and Monday by the throat. Now I'm going back to bed. <laughs> no, I actually, uh, I really, the fact that you are committed to that and do that is amazing. You, listen. I make fun of you. I know because I I have will to never get away. do it myself. I literally have to get away into some solitude of life, or else I'd go crazy. Yeah, I can't really. L.A. is not the city I can live in without that. Right. Oh, totally. Yeah. No, it's good, but that's why you're running up a mountain is my going into the garage and sanding a piece Perfect. of wood. For but it's by an yourself. You it. do that by yourself, right? Yeah, do it there's, all by myself. Dude, there's something to say about doing stuff alone and hardships alone. Yeah. All right, now we're getting deep again. Let's do it. This is crazy. You want to go deep? We're on a roller coaster ride of emotions on here. Listen, we've had the foreplay. Let's get deep. No, I want more foreplay. All right. <laughs> Michael. Let's have deeper foreplay. Michael, I want foreplay. Michael, how do you. Per, perano? Perano? How do you say your last name? Technically, it's Padreño. Padreño? Padreño, because it's the double, the double R and yes. the N-Y, but oh, it's I mostly, I mostly just, I'll just do Perano is fine. No, sir. Padreño. I like that. Mr. Padreño. Dude. Padreño. They're making a new Scarface here. You about this? Wait. Oh, we were going to get deep. Now we're talking about Scarface. Nah, 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 we, 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 no, not. I want to get deep. All right. I want to get deep. I want to get deeper into the foreplay. No. <laughs> Come on. No. I, I, I feel I'm like just we're saying, stuck on second right, base. Right, Let's right, get okay. to third. Okay. So, I, you know, I just find, you know, there's something very beneficial and you just find out a lot about yourself. You can't lie to yourself when you're by yourself. You know what I'm constantly telling people to do? I don't think Listen I've to told the you. <laughs> well, yeah. Besides that, I don't think I've told you this because I don't need to tell you this. But I, I'm constantly telling people in my life to. Okay, now brace yourself. This sounds very counterintuitive to my current career. <laughs> we almost all out of time, Michael. <laughs> okay. No, but I'm constantly telling people to turn off the radio in their car. Why? Because driving around. In the silence of your car and having nothing but your thoughts is amazing. I think that's and, beneficial. And at can times. be amazing, I especially if you just got a quick, like, you know, 10, 10, 15 minute drive. Just click the radio. Like, if you're look, if you're going, if you're going to be sitting in traffic for an hour and you want to cut on a podcast, hopefully one of the nice guy digital podcasts yeah. on Adobe Radio. Blah blah blah. Uh, we um, Sam's World number one podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> We Sam's World, The Brett Davin Show, Pruner TV, yeah. Hostage Radio, or For Real, real though. though. Those are the five shows. Yeah. Anyway, if you're going for an hour and you want to cut something on or music or NPR or whatever, I totally get it. Um, but I got to tell you, 
a quick 15 minute drive or something just head to the gym whatever like a quick little run yeah and you just cut the radio off it's great it's great you do so much thinking i feel like this is another old man rant but anecdotally i feel like this is true i don't even know if this is true but like you know everyone's just so inundated with 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 content all the time and we're talking about netflix and all these things it's like Netflix comes out with something so fast it's hard to even keep up with, and there's just all this noise all the time. Uh, around my house, we got those Alexas, you know, yeah. that like you can you talk to them and they play music and whatever. And ever since we got those around the house, there's just constantly sound, constantly now, and it's driving me bananas. And I'm I'm constantly having a, a conversation with Mrs. D where I'm like, hey. We gotta cut this off. Like, let's just have it be quiet around here a little bit. You right. know, like it's it's okay to not always have a playlist going or always have a something on in the background. You know, like all these people you hear that they, they they fall asleep with the TV on, and they have to in order to go to sleep. It's like stop. It just it crowds your brain. No, I totally agree with you. You know, I want to say I don't want to say like podcasts saved my life because that would be way too dramatic. But they have shown me doors and perspectives I would have never known before in my life. Yeah. And yes, I agree with you. Sometimes it's good just to be in your own life. Yeah. And in your own mind. Uh huh. Because you can't lie to yourself yeah. in your own mind. You know the truth. Yeah. Deep down inside. Especially when you meditate and you think about stuff. Sure. And things are quiet. You can't run away from your thoughts. Yeah. A lot of people who go on these silent retreats for like one week, two weeks where they're not allowed to talk, play music, do anything like that. Oh, that sounds write, so good. They're not allowed to do any of that stuff. They end up crying and having these emotional sure. breakdowns, and they realize they have to face the the faults in their life, the things they've done wrong, the things that are troubling them. Yeah. And by the end of it, they always feel like, yes, okay, I'm ready to face this now. I had an – ex- oh, oh, no, no, no I was sorry, just going to say – but at the same time, sometimes it's good to t- chime in with podcasts. With yeah. awesome people yeah. over there. Yeah. That way you're like, ooh, I like that thought. Let me think about that. And it's always good to contemplate things sure. in silence. Well, being introduced to new ideas and things all the time is, is very important for sure. I, uh, a quick story. Katie and I, uh, with our show, we got to go to uh, the Mammoth Film Festival. Yes. And so we went – this was like a couple months ago. And we went up there. We were there for like three or four days. Maybe just three days. I can't remember. Anyway – uh, we were driving around getting like all this footage, and Mammoth is a, is a little mountain town here in uh, California, and they have a ski area and all the things that you would have in any mountain town. Uh, it's really high in elevation, um, and it's sort of isolated out there by itself. There's a lake, and it's really beautiful and pristine. And so we took uh, video cameras and sound equipment and all these things because we were doing interviews and red carpet things for the film festival and all these different things. And so one of the mornings we were just driving around because there were no screenings that morning for us to cover. So we're driving around and getting all these shots and Katie's standing up and um, and out of the sunroof and like we're shooting and just getting a bunch of footage that we can then put in the videos later when we return to Los Angeles. So Katie – stands up and she's out the sunroof and she films herself doing that and then she's like now i'll drive and you do it and i'm like okay and so we stopped the car but we're on this like road out the middle of nowhere like outside of this mountain town and we hadn't seen another car in like 25 minutes on this like little two-lane road it was paved and everything but i mean it was it was out there by itself so i stop the car and get out and the second i got out of the car and shut the door it was so silent that it it was shocking yeah. how silent it was because you know when you're in the car even with the radio off because we were shooting film you got the air conditioner going so there's like even a little white noise that like sound you know we're talking to each other there's sound but getting out and then shutting the door it was so quiet and it's the middle of the day and you're just surrounded by these mountains and it's it's absolutely silent because you're off the – we're so far off the highway that you couldn't even hear the, the sound of right. the trucks or anything. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And I reached back in the car, and I just turned the engine off too. I was like – and then she's, she's like walking around the car to, to drive, and I was like, wait, wait, listen. And we stood there and just listened, and it was so quiet that it was – loud or something like the 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 sound of silence was loud and it was peaceful 
and a beautiful moment, but also there was something uncomfortable about it. Like I, we we didn't even stand there very long because I almost found felt myself going like, <clears throat> okay, I I I need to get back at like uh, like I found myself uncomfortable, and and so I know exactly like what you were trying to describe with these people at these silent retreats. I'm like, yeah, I don't. I think I would find a breaking point very quickly in the in the silence of that because we're so used to having constant sound. There is a constant striving for people who are not so intertwined with their um with the life that's in front of them like you know there are people in this world and they're on their own journey who are just focused on the material things uh uh-huh. on the the you know just the, just things in their life yeah and that's and and that that's that's it. that's fine they're on their own journey but there are certain other people and I think I categorize myself in this group who kind of take a step back and see everything in third person perspective and be like, oh, well, what, what is this? I mean, is this, is this thing really important? What does mm-hmm. this serve me? Is this a beneficial tool? Is this person really beneficial in my life? Well, well, why is this person doing this? And then that reflection and that microscopic evaluation on yourself or, excuse me, on other people and other things – it starts to go towards yourself and starts yeah. to go inward. So lately, this is a very personal thing that I'd like to share. I've been, and I haven't found an answer. I've been asking myself, who am I? Who am I? Is a huge weighted question because I'm like, okay, I know my name is Wiesan Kish, but that's a name given by my parents. Sure. This physical body that I inhabit is gorgeous <sighs> incredibly gorgeous stunning hair but it's all stuff that's been uh, genetically taken from my parents sure and then my life circumstances have kind of built brick by brick a, a kind of self definition of me a self about you know like uh, like okay because of these things that have happened in my life i kind of have this idea of myself yeah and then certain people who have come across in my lifetime have varying, you know, definitions of who we Sam is, but for the most part, it's along the same lines. Yeah. And for myself, it's a very interesting dynamic because it's I'm looking at it, but at the same time, it's like, well, take all those, take my name away, take all those experiences away, take away my physical body. Who am I then? I don't know. And it's something I've been, I've been hitting this brick wall in my mind. About yeah. What defines a person? And that's why I feel more than ever whenever I'm really focused on that, I find a pull to the mountain more. Mm-hmm. I find myself wanting to be alone more because there's this like something is, something's pulling me towards this because I haven't found an answer yet. The more I'm dealing with stuff in the material world and the material life that I, that I have to live in, that, that, <laughs> that I am living in, that question starts getting foggy and I don't care about it. But yeah. as soon as I start taking that third person perspective again, I'm getting pulled towards it more. Anyway, that's just something I wanted to share. I, I don't think there's – I don't know where I was going with it, but I it's think that for lines. me, I used to feel a lot of what you're describing. But at the same time, I think what I've found lately is that I'm not going to know the answer. I don't know if there even is an answer as far as who are you, why are we here, all these kinds of – giant questions how do you know you won't know the answer I, well this is what i'm saying like i think i've just sort of come to this realization of like i don't know well, here's what i should say i don't know if i'm ever gonna find the answer and i'm okay with that now okay i'm okay with it i've come to peace with it i just go like that's all right i'm gonna just enjoy this is sounds so cliche but i'm just gonna enjoy the the search and just enjoy the journey and not really worry about whether i could find the answer or not i'm just gonna live do the best I can, mm. try to be a nice person, try okay. to you know be considered, try to do all the things that we were talking about, try to let people in on the freeway, and just sort of like a try, try to do that. I mean, you're always going to have moments where you, right. you know, but try to do that as much as I can, and if the answers to all these big questions come along at some point, great, and if they don't, that's fine too, and I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. I, I think- just, as long as I'm just taking some time every once in a while um, to... Uh, you know, like like bang on some wood in the garage, I'll be fine. You know that that's that's great too, and 
I don't know where this this search will lead me. I honestly don't know. Yeah. And it's just something that's really been pulling at me within the last six to eight months. It's really just been kind of nagging at me because I saw this video by C.T. Fletcher, who's an amazing, amazing life coach. He's a, he's a weightlifter, but he survived like open heart surgery a bunch of times. And he's just like a hoss of a human being, yeah. big life motivator, big positive guy, realistic guy. And in this video, he talks about um, will is key to the success, willpower. And whenever you give 100% into whatever you do, there is victory in that, regardless if you fail or succeed, giving 100%. And at the end of the video, specifically, he says, remember who you are. Remember who you are. Remember who the fuck you are. And that's the way the video ends. And I'm like, yes. And then I was like, well, and you're like, who, who am I? But who am I? Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Who? Yeah. I think yeah. that I I think for me is just just my opinion. Obviously, I I think that who you are can change a million times, and it'll never really be the same, even like on a daily basis. And so I'm saying, for me, I kind of stopped searching for who I am because I sort of just went like, I have a really good idea or what I think is a good idea of who I want to be, which is like nice, like we're saying, like nice person, considerate, blah blah blah, like. Uh, yeah. responsible, uh, good work ethic, like these kinds of things. I think I have a good handle on all that. And so I'm just kind of starting to, in life, go like, I'm going to let go of constantly trying to figure out who I am because I kind of know who I want to be and I'm trying to do that. And so now I'm just going to let it go. Does that make sense? Yeah, man. Maybe I'm not really no, 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 no. Uh, I get verbalizing you. Verbalizing exactly what's in my head, but no, no. I get you, man. I, I agree with you. It just changed on a daily basis. I'm just trying to find the core. You know, where yeah. did I, where did because I believe I am a soul. Not that I have a soul, but I am a soul, and that the brain is just a, a tool. But to, I think, to, to, but I think I have a pretty good idea of who you are. Well, that's you from your perspective, right? I'm talking about me. No, I know, I know. On a more core level, though, right. And this is getting into a more spiritual aspect of it, yes, but that's something that I'm I'm searching for. I don't know. Again, I don't know if I'll find the answer. Probably not, but not in this lifetime. Maybe not. Maybe I will. Who knows? But it's just um, I'm on my journey. I don't know where it will lead me. Yeah. I just think it's important to ask these questions too because I feel like – Well, I think what we're talking about different... is like mindfulness. It's like yes. mindfulness, just Thanks being so aware, much. being being mindful, taking some time to think and like that's the thing, man. It's like I find I, I run into people in life all the time and – and they're just so consumed with, like we were saying, like the material things, the next, the, the, the social media, the next selfie, the next whatever. And like, I just, I find that they don't take the time to just drive around with the radio off and just kind of think some thoughts or to go. Like, I love airplanes and I really, really, really used to love airplanes even before they had Wi Fi and all that on them because it's like, they're just like these little chambers, like these little steel tubes flying through the air where you can just be completely unattached from the world. It's great. You know what's ruined flying for me? What? Flying business and first class. Yeah, it's rough. Dude, I can't I this is gonna sound so pretentious. I don't I don't care. But if you if you've <laughs> oh, flown no. if you've flown <laughs> business or first <laughs> class guy? and then you gotta fly coach again, yeah. you're like, Oh god, yeah. this is miserable. No, see I like Be on a sixteen no. hour flight to Dubai. I like coach. going ah, I like no, going back you. there and mingling with the common people. I find it keeps me grounded. Also I, I forget what real people smell like after a while. This and so guy. it's nice to go back no, there and I get want a, a good warm whiff. hand towel. I want a warm hand towel. I want warm <laughs> nuts. That's what I want. Warm cashew nuts. I want I want a more selection for my for my visual entertainment. Yeah. I want a lay down bed because I was just a lay spoiled. down bed. Yeah. Well, you're you're talking about going on like a real long flight. No, uh, Jet Blue from uh, L.A. to New York. Yeah. Well, that's like six hours. That's a yeah. Little, that's, they, they that's give you a, a hall. business. It's oh a yeah. Full lay down. Hey, buddy. I know. I Good. used to get. I used to get. Flown oh, are you an the, actor? I used to get flown to the VMAs every once in a while. Are you an actor? I am. Oh wow. That's or, crazy. I used to be. Um, I. I dude. I don't know. I've flown. I've flown on some really long coach flights. I. It doesn't bother me. I'm not very tall. Neither are you. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me. I want comfort. I don't care. I it bothers me with the other person next to me. That's what bothers me. You know me. what boggles my mind though? Man, this weird we're just all over the place. Oh, whatever. It. You know what you know what kills me though about first class and business and all that? Is that I still have to sit next to other people up there. So my new thing is I just want to fly private everywhere. Yeah. 
No, that's not. That's not what I was going to say. That's a joke. Um, what you, gets you just me, say you're like white people? What? What? You're white? What? <laughs> um, uh, wait, no. I was going to say. Um, God, what was I going to say? What was? What did I start to say? Oh, now I can't even uh, remember. No, it's going to hit spoiled. me when I listen back. I, to listen, this. when you realize because Monday, it was a pretty. It was the best day I've had with my family. Yeah, ever. yeah. Like literally the best day, and we got um, a VIP tour guide. Yeah, at Disneyland. Yeah. And with VIP tour guide, you get um, to jump into fast pass. Oh lanes. yeah, because you're on ABC. That's Disney, baby. Yeah. So you get to jump in the fast pass lanes without yeah, the do. specific time plan. And if there is no fast pass lanes, you just go right and on. And you don't even have to make your brother wear like a fake leg cast or anything. No, no, no. No, now you're getting the VIP for real. No, but my mom was in a. Uh, we got a wheelchair for my mom because she has knee and back problems. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. but um, we weren't using it the whole time. But when she got tired, we oh, just my, push her. Around. My brother and I back in the day, we used to just put a fake cast on him. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so dishonest. <laughs> we do we do that at Six Flags. <laughs> hey, we were young, man. We wanted to get on the front of the roller coaster. Well, what I was saying was, I can't do Disneyland again without a VIP tour guide. Oh my god. Oh no! Hey, Brett, I'm not waiting two hours in a line to ride a ride that's Listen, thirty Lisa, seconds. Sometimes, sometimes. Brett, no. In life. Don't argue with me on this. I'm gonna. We're gonna end the show, Brett. <laughs> He's so upset. I, oh, my gosh. You want to wait an hour and a half in a line for a ride that's like one minute long? Well, no. I don't like Disneyland. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan. I, I I was like you, sir. I find that people who like Disneyland a little bit too much are – they have issues, I think. <laughs> I think they have mental issues. <laughs> I think – I was going to say that they're psychopaths or serial killers, and they might be. But I think those people that like Disneyland – like, you hey. see these full-blown adults that are just wearing nothing but, like, Disney regalia, and they – all it's it's, hey, it's too much. Mr. Davern, yeah. I was – I didn't care about Disneyland. Yeah, me neither. But when I went and the good time that I had with my family, I was like, you know what? I see why people really enjoy this. But – Yeah, I, but you were I, getting I, to the front of the line every time. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You now, didn't feel like a bit of an asshole oh, walking so past I everybody? I that, brother. Yeah, I earned I it. So. I that's worked true. hard. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. But the, like <laughs> but the first No, you're right. You're you're absolutely right about that. But the first time they walked you to the front, you didn't kind of have that tinge of just nope. like Ugh. Oh man. No. You've really gone to the dark side. You're you're going to Dude, the dark side. That I am in a part of my life where I just don't care what other people think anymore. Can I can I float this to you though? Sure. Can I float this to you though? I think the reason you enjoyed it so much though is because you don't have it all the time and didn't have it all the time. No. Yeah. We are 100% right. And and add the fact Wait, that I'm 100% right? Wait, hold on. I'm, I'm 100% right? Just don't, don't, don't look through the window at her. You're 80% right. Talk this to is me. why. This is why you're we right. We don't know what she's trying to say anyway. We don't Plus, speak I was sign with language. my mom and dad and my brother, my youngest brother joined us and we rarely get a full family time like that together. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, pause. Pause. Okay. Go back. Okay. Do you agree with what I was saying about not getting it all the time, or you're disagreeing? Oh, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing. I think if you grew up – like let's say you just grew up and like uh, – I don't know. Your dad was on an ABC show or something like that, yeah. and so you grew up going to Disneyland like that all the time. You wouldn't – you would enjoy it. Of course you would enjoy it. You would enjoy getting in the front of the line and all those things, but it wouldn't be as special. And I think it's the same thing with first class, business class, all those things. Look, you, that's why you love it so much. Because if it just becomes regular, then it just becomes part of life. Right, right. It's not yes. special anymore. No, you're, you've got You have to every about, once yes. in a while fly coach as long as it's only no. to like hey, Vegas man. or something. No, I'm not flying coach anymore. You're insane. I'm prime time. You're insane. I'm you're... Brett. I'm prime. Why oh, I know I what I was going to say. I know what I was going to say. <laughs> Remember a long time ago when I forgot what I was going to say? Here's what I was going to say. What I was going to say is what really blows my mind about coach and business class is when you – if you're paying for it yourself – that price difference is insane. Yeah, it is. It's insane for a a reclining seat and some warm nuts and and a hot towel. That I mean, you go from a three hundred dollar plane ticket to a four thousand dollar plane ticket. I mean, the price. It's not. It's not like you go from three hundred to six hundred. You go from like three hundred to like. Eighteen hundred. It's, it's, it's insane. Usually, it's it's usually five times more in business. And it's if you want to go on international flight, so like a first class, you're, you're talking about a flight for ten grand. 
Yeah. So if you're if you're looking at business class from Dubai to uh, you know L.A., you're looking at over ten grand. That's insane for a flight. That's insane. You can't justify that. I get that. You, you can't. cannot justify so that. If you're paying for it yourself, look. MTV wants to pay for it. I'm in all day long. Yeah, you of multi course. multi million dollar of company course. wants it. Yeah, you're gonna. I could never pay for. I don't think even if you came down right now, if if Shonda came down right now with her magic wand and waved it, because I think she's probably some sort of magical genie or something. Okay. If she came down and waved her magic wand and was like, "Brett, boom, you've got a hundred million bucks," I still think me. In my upbringing, couldn't pay a ten thousand dollar airfare. That's insane. Nah, I couldn't do it. I'd rather pay ten thousand dollars for something else. Of course, yeah, yeah, me too. But the thing is, it does get. I was in a miserable seat from Dubai to L.A., and those sixteen hours. Oh, really yes, felt of like, course. And not to say that when you're in there in the seat, you're like, you know what? Should have paid ten grand. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Of yeah. course. But afterwards, you've been like. Ah, down 10 grand oh man yeah that's that's a lot of cash that's a lot of money i mean i've been on some long flights i've flown from here to tokyo i've flown from here to amsterdam i've flown from and and i've done those coach and it sucks but you know what when i think back on those trips i don't think of the plane when you're in the middle of somebody's fart (laughs) you're like yeah i'll pay 10 grand to get out of this also you're like sir you might need to see a doctor (laughs) you might need to get that checked out (laughs) <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm so rude on flights. Hey. When somebody farts, I just go like this. I just put my hand over my face. I'm so rude. Uh, you know that they do fart in first class in business, no, right? No, they don't. It's against the rules. Well, I was going to say that <laughs> it's just that the second they do, the flight attendant comes along and like cleans it up really quickly. And I know it's in the air, but like just comes along instantly. They just know. There's like a, an alarm that goes off or something. Um, so real quick before we wrap it up. Real quick. <laughs> We've been talking for like four hours. No, we haven't. It's been an hour. Hour and 35 minutes. I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> it? Yeah. Oh. It goes by quick. Well, let's go for two more. It has, I, I feel like it's gone by quick. Yeah, I feel like that too. Real quick, you have, you said five shows. You've got the Brett Davern Show on Monday through Friday. Brett Davern Show is on uh, Monday through Friday. Yep, 7 a.m. on the West Coast, 10 a.m. on the East right. Coast. It's on Adobe Radio. Katie's show. Go to adobe.com. But we also podcast everything, and there's YouTube and awesome. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Katie's show that she's 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 also on is uh, well. Katie Radio is on Radio. another show with two other girls, uh, Jillian Rose Reed, who is also on Awkward. She Don't know her. Tamara. <laughs> Never worked and, with her. Uh, Don't know her. You made out with her. The last episode we on did. camera, yeah. yeah. Um, dude, I make out with a lot of people. Bro. Yeah, bro, I make out so many chicks. Dude, I keep saying prime time. time bro. Sound so obnoxious. Oh, everyone's just <laughs> everyone's just like this guy is so out of touch. Hey, um, we're kidding around. Yeah, it's all tongue in cheek, people. It's a joke. Um, uh, so, uh, so let's see. So, Brett Davern show is on every single morning, and it's podcast and YouTube and all that. Uh, there's another show called For Real Though. That's the name of the show. And it's uh, Katie and Jillian Rose Reed and Bianca Bethune, who Bianca was on Switched at Birth with right. Katie was Katie's an actor as well, who was on a show called Switched at Birth, and they were on that together. And then Jillian has has joined that show, and they, you know, talk about what it is to be, uh, you know, experiencing this land of L.A. from a female perspective. And um, I think the, the description of their show talks about like you know from from boys to auditions to hair journeys to blah blah you know all the things that's fun. that they cover. I like that. Um, and then wait, do they have guests on their show? They haven't yet. I think they're like seven or eight episodes in. They haven't yet, but I, they've been talking about starting to have people sit in with them, like we Sam. Well, I'm not yeah, a girl though. Maybe they don't have girls. They the drink show. a ton of champagne and tequila and Uh-oh. talk about. Um, uh oh. Things that your mama might not want to listen to. Uh-oh. Yeah, oh, yeah. They get into it. Nice. Yeah, Katie like told some story about this guy putting whipped cream all over his junk and being tied oh, down to a bed. Oh, boy. It gets crazy on that show. Oh, boy. Um, and then what else we got? We got Hostage Radio is on on Saturdays. It's also podcasted YouTube. Also, for real, those podcasted YouTube all that. Great. Um, there's one called Hostage Radio, which is basically almost like a behind the music. Like when VH1 used to do that back in oh, the day, nice. they do cool. like a... You know, like a behind the music on Green Day or or whatever, and it's sort of a radio version of that. Um, and it's hosted by Katie's brother, actually, whose his name is Denny, and he is just knows everything there is to know about music. Nice, and uh, he's great at it, and it's it's a great show. And then um, Pruner TV is another show. I was on that. It's our friend Aaron Pruner, who is a TV writer. Um, he watches more TV than I've ever even 
could even dream of watching. He's really aggressive. Um, yeah. Like he put me in a headlock. Right? Really? Like, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Can you imagine? He's starting rumors. About he just, Aaron? dude. He, he's, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's just, he's a TV guy, and uh, so he just, he has guests and um, actors. I and told you I was on directors it, right? and stuff. You were on there. On Aaron on his show, I was on it. Oh, did you tell great stories? Actually, I did. <laughs> it was this best episode yet. Like, <laughs> like it was that episode yeah. was on iTunes number one for about like five weeks. Whoa! Straight. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> Um, and then what was – is that it? Did I cover them all? Did I forget um, one? I think Pruner, so. Pruner, Hostage, for real. When am I coming you, back on the Brett Davern uh, show? Uh, whenever you want. Whenever you want. I'm outside that door every morning at 7. I think the thing that's fun for, <laughs> for me – Just ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I heard you. I just oh, plowed right on. Um. It's it's a lot of fun, you know. Like we used to do the old podcast with with Marty and and uh, my other buddy Ben, and it was is a lot different of a show. And I think it's been fun for me to find the voice of this new show right. that I'm doing and figure out what it is. And like we were talking about at the beginning of this conversation, which is like, don't worry about what it is before you're even doing it. Just start doing it, and then kind of figure out what it is as yeah. you're going along, um, because you will figure it out. And it took about. I don't know. I, I think there was like t- 20 episodes in, something like that. And I remember, and as I was saying, Katie and I carpool. So on the way back out to our houses, I remember looking at her and going like, I think I figured it out. I figured out what this show is. And what the Brad Davern show is now is just a morning show, a fun way to wake up morning show full of energy. We're going to have a guest. We're going to play silly games. I'm going to launch into some ridiculous opinion about Reese's Peanut Butter Cups or whatever and we're just going to have fun. And as soon as I let go of – because I think on the old podcast, it was like I wanted to have these like serious conversations and these like in-depth uh, things. And not that we, we can't go there or won't go there. It's just that I'm at peace with that the new version of the show is just a fun morning yeah. show that's lighthearted and – and whatever, and but that's kind of all comes back to like just letting something be, like just doing it and letting it be, and figuring out what it is as you're going along, and that's okay. Well, I gotta say, and I'm not just saying that because you're my friend or um, you know we work together or whatever. It seriously is probably the best morning show I've ever heard. Oh, thanks, man. It's that engaging and entertaining. Thank you. And it's evolved into something so cool from when I remember the fir- the show first going on. Yeah, and that's part of the cool thing about it i mean if you look at let's take a great example joe rogan yeah if you look at his first episode one of his podcast it looked like shit yeah sure but then you look at it now and you look at the guests he's having it's like cool that's an awesome journey yeah anyway well it's I, we did a hundred and i think we did 115 episodes of the original podcast uh and like i said like i was explaining earlier we didn't we didn't do it every day so we would meet up like once a month or twice a month or what. So it was sort of irregular when we'd meet up. Right. And so like our third episode of the day was always better than the first episode because we were finally in the mode and whatever. But we did 115 of them. I think right now on the morning show we're up to like episode number 90 something. So we've almost done 100 of those already, wow. but we're That's doing good. it every day. And it's just a lot easier to get into a groove and, and find your rhythm and all those things and – and find the voice of it, and I think we have, and we're having a great time over there, and we're constantly coming up with new segments and new fun great. games and all these things, and it's just it's just fun. I, I love it. Awesome, brother. Yeah, I love where I'm at. And, you know, of course, I'm always auditioning and trying to get the next, you know, movie or TV gig or whatever, but in the meantime, I'm loving what I'm doing, and I'm happy to be doing it, and I'm happy that it's found an audience, but even if it hasn't, I'd be doing it anyway. You're an inspiration. <laughs> You're you're incredibly good looking. I know, man. Thanks for saying that. Oh, I thought you were going to come back with another compliment. I Absolutely thought we were going to have a compliment not. off. Right, no, you don't want to do that with me. I'll just take the, I'll take what you last said and just like what I just did. <laughs> you just take every comment I made. I'm a bad person. You you have <laughs> piercing blue eyes. I wish I did. No, no you're supposed like to say it's so do you. Oh, oh see, I don't know what you're doing, man. Can't even stick to his own game. Oh, we're out of time. Damn. <laughs> hey. Thanks for coming on, Brett. You're at, at Brett Davern. Of course, man. And then uh, your people want to check out your show. No, no, I'm it? at B Dav. Oh, jeez, he messed yeah. up my social, my social oh, shit. You have oh to man, it. my selfie game will really be taking a oh, thing. Boy. Can I tell you? 
let's not I know we're wrapping it up, but social media is such a necessary evil. I always feel like I'm talking crap about social media. Yeah. Uh and it's like, like you're you know, oh, people d- d- take selfies and all this stuff. and I'm always like kind of talking down at that stuff. But we need, you know, it's a good way to promote especially in the business that we're in. So I understand its use. I think it's a tool. It's a tool, yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. So if you use the tool properly, yeah. it benefits you. If you don't, it harms People you. People can become too obsessed with it. I forget to post on Instagram. I actually just forget. Like I just – You should see a doctor. I right? don't remember. Yeah, you should see a doctor. I mean you, you were raised in the 70s, born in the 60s, so that's probably like an – I think honestly what I'm saying is it just doesn't cross my mind. Like someone starts doing – like you'll start doing something out in the lobby or whatever, and it doesn't cross my mind to like be like, I should film this. Or oh, I should like mindfulness, it. you mean. I should be more mindful of posting on Instagram. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, great. Were you that guy who was in the middle of the road yesterday? <laughs> what? Oh, sitting there? <laughs> yes, I do drive Uber and Lyft sometimes now, too. <laughs> wow, that's how, uh, that's how I pay for the first class plane tickets. Oh. With all the Uber. <laughs> he was so uninterested in that. Did you? Wait, let's replay that. Oh. oh. <laughs> He wants to end the show so badly. I'm not going to let him. I'm just going to keep talking. Oh. Oh. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you need to cut that. Michael, you need to cut that out and play the, play this back every time the guest says something. Here, wait. I'll do it for you. And then later <laughs> you cut this out. And then you play it every time we say is uninterested in whatever his guest is saying. Ready? Ready? Oh. <laughs> No, I got this new movie, man. It hits theaters on Wednesdays. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just look around. <laughs> Dude, oh, man. Seriously, I had such a blast with you. Oh, uh, buddy. I love you. And, uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. All right. Yeah, I love it. We're out. Well, we made it through. It was awesome having Brett on, actually. Uh, no, he's a great guy, and I love him. I love his show. I love everything he does, and just all-around good person. We had a blast. We laughed so hard. Be sure to check out the Brett Davern Show every morning on Adobe Radio. Uh, check him out at BDAV, and you can see all the rest of his other shows he's got on there. Uh, for real, though, Aaron Pruner, uh, Pruner TV, um, just a bunch more, man. I mean, this podcast family is growing. Uh, be sure to check us out at, at uh, WeSams underscore world on our social media. We're on podcasts. Um, we're on YouTube. And we want to thank you guys for listening. Seriously. We really appreciate you guys. Without you guys, the show wouldn't be going on. Big thank you for at, um, big thank you to Tom at Adobe Radio and for everything that Adobe does for us and Nice Guy Digital. Uh, to my social media team, T and Taylor, you guys are awesome. To you, Michael. Michael, I like you, man. Because you direct. You work hard. You're not lazy. You're a good purse. You good person. I'm starting to talk like Chris D'Elia now in my daily life. Be sure to check out his podcast. Congratulations. Um, that's also a great podcast. Anyway, thanks for listening. Be sure to check us out next week. Much love, guys. Take care. Bye.